Hi mom and five friends on Facebook. Let's have a guess about our next painting. You guys right. You guys right. So I'm not the Scarlett Johansson and neither I am a great Dutch painter. And I'm a horrible oil painting and I'm even worse in portrait, as my brother would like to say always. I have to say I tried to make him to put this uh, painting on his wall. Uh, he didn't like it at all. But yeah, last time I tried to paint Mona Lisa. It is not a good idea to ask internet for opinions because, ooh, I got it. My favorite out of all was just simple Mongolo Lisa. So let's see how it goes because now I'm not gonna use acrylics, I'll be using oil. So let's paint it, let's paint this fantastic masterpiece. The Mona Lisa of the North, let's paint the girl with the pearl earring. Yoohoo! Many people attempted to recreate this painting but they all adjusted the size to fit the regular frame. I mean why wouldn't they? It's nearly the same classical size. But I like to make my life complicated and in order to do so I decided to make it exactly the same like the original canvas on a wooden frame from scratch. Making the frame is actually easy, you just get some wood, you cut it, you plane it, put it all together, you get some piece of canvas and staple it on it. So I print the picture in the same size as the original just to have like a good feel and it's very hard to do it on a printer which prints only A4 copies because then you have to kind of assemble it together but I manage it, put it on my wall and now I am ready to do it. I know that with portrait it is crucial to get the proportions right. I was thinking about projector but this sometimes distort the face when it's not perfectly aligned so I decided to do the old school classical grid. Great thing is about the grid is that even if your line within the square is not perfect it will be corrected in the next square so overall shape and position will be retained. So let's see if I was right and I was able to actually draw this magnificent painting out. Also before I started to paint I just add one more layer of gesso on a canvas just to kind of smoothen it out and I tried to tint it but it looked kind of crap. So I had to add one more layer of acrylic paint and I choose this nice warm mid-tone where I can judge then the value of the paint much better. So hopefully this can also help me to get a better painting. I saw online that everybody was working on glass with oils and I had no glass palette so I had to get a little bit creative. My wife was very happy about it. As I said, I'm not very skilled with oil color, so to make life easier, I decided to pre-mix few, which I believe were the closest to the lightest and the darkest skin tones. In the end, I used only two or three, but at least it gave me some sort of consistency and confidence in my color in case I had to stop and continue the next day. And I really wanted actually to start a painting as I saw online, as I saw a guy do it, and start carefully and finish each part before moving to another. The only successful reproduction I saw on YouTube used this approach. I lasted exactly 5 minutes until I abandoned it and just started to apply the paint all over the face. From now on I was on my own and if you ever painted you know the feeling. It's like meditating while having a panic attack. Maybe it gets better when you actually know how to paint. But for now anxiety is not going anywhere. And I first started with the faces, I knew that if I can't do the face, I don't have the painting. But luckily, it was looking like it started to be recognizable, so I just continued. Original painting is so magnificent, soft edges, carefully rendered light, illuminating her skin, and mysterious smiles made this one of the most well-known paintings, similar to Mona Lisa. It was painted by a great Dutch painter, Johannes Vermeer. He was so great that they just forgot about him for 200 years. It took two centuries until his revolutionary work started to be acknowledged and celebrated. His carefully structured scene from daily life are legendary for its rendition of light. He's often referred to as painter of light. Not you, King Kate. Go back, take your fairy tale cottages and fuck off. Vermi was so good at it that people are hypothesizing he was using a new device to paint his compositions, a camera obscura. It is an intricate device sometimes also called as a hole in the wall. Because you just need a hole and a wall. And if the hole is small enough and the room behind the wall is dark enough, you can see the projection of upside down image of the real world. 
This had to be so fascinating in 16th century. The illusion made by the hall was glorious. So in medieval Europe they called it the glory hall. Yeah, really, uh, Google it. <laughs> When I was young, I was always puzzled by this painting. I mean, I did not get it. I mean, why is it famous? It doesn't even look like Scarlett Johansson. But once you read a bit more, you can see what it represents. New approach to portraiture. It was not only about capturing the face, but also the stare, the mood, the intention of the character. Vermeer gave this simple painting a story. Story which is being discussed and debated even now after 600 years. And that's what the power of the painting is. You know, it's uh, it's around uh, it's around one, so I had to stop painting very soon because I have around one hour a day for which I can paint. Because I came home from work around seven, I have to cook dinner, I have to play with the kid, change him because my wife has to also have a little bit of free time, and he fell asleep around 23:30, so I have one hour before I have to go to bed so I can wake up and be a little bit fresh for work. And people told me once you have a kid you will never be able to achieve anything in your hobbies. And I thought, challenge accepted. But you know what is funny? Johannes Vermeer had 11 kids. So now I'm not surprised he was able to make two masterpieces a year. I thought it's too little, but uh, I have one kid. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to make one reproduction. So very good for Johannes Vermeer. Very good, impressed. Oh, I nearly forgot to paint the most important part, the pearl. What I wanted to achieve is what Vermeer did. There is no pearl actually painted, only its reflection, a dab of white paint floating in space. Mine is a bit off, but uh, that will do. I mean, it's a pearl, it doesn't have to be perfect. Ok, the first layer is done. There are a few issues with shapes, proportions, color values and brush strokes, basically with everything, but you can definitely tell what we are trying to do. I bought this tool in back to school set and I checked the main proportions and I saw that some eyelids were painted too small and especially it helped me fix the mouth which I painted way too small. One simple advice, when you buy your tools, maybe buy a little bit more expensive than the cheapest because when I was mixing the color for the lips I nearly killed myself or at least poked my eye. People ask me why I paint these old masters. Actually, only one person, my mom, and I mean, she didn't really ask. She just told me, do not paint portraits when you obviously can't. <laughs> but you know, this is what they call the East European family support. The reason why I do this reproduction is to challenge myself and to see not only if I can do it, but it gives opportunity to study the painting in details. You really go through every single part of it to look at every angle, every brush stroke. And it gives you also the opportunity to be transported back in time and feel how the painter feels when they painted the work. It's like time travel. You are staring at the same painting, doing the same brushstroke, using the same tools. It's like just for a moment I'm there. I am Vermeer. I am painting the girl with the pearl earring. So ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2022! And in case you are watching this video in any other time than holidays, it might look a little bit awkward. So without further ado, please let me present to you my Vermeer. My girl with a pearl earring. I mean, it's not great, but actually it's much better than I expected. Yeah, the colors are off and there is always something to improve, but at some point you just have to say, it was enough. And surprisingly, it wasn't even that hard. If you don't know how to do something, you just have to atomize the process to the smallest possible simple task. If you don't know how to draw, just make a grid and try to put one curved line after another. If you don't know how to paint, you just try to match the color, mix it as much as you can and then just put a little dab where it belongs and you'll get somewhere. And even if what you make looks like crap, it doesn't matter. You just made something out of nothing and not everybody can say that. So go out there and do your creative hobby, create something and in case you like this video, just do whatever you want. But if you have a suggestion what should I paint next, just leave it in the comment or just tell me because most likely I know all five of you. So guys, I wish you a wonderful year 2022 and I hope it will be better than the last two. Bye bye.